Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good. What's up, and welcome to the Workout Nerd Up. I'm Julio Lopez. I've got my master's degree in nutrition, as well as being a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a certified personal trainer with over eight years of experience in personal training. When you look at the mechanisms of weight loss, the process looks a lot simpler than it really is. Your body burns a certain amount of calories each day. If you were to engage in more physical activity, it would be burning more calories. Also, if you were to reduce your caloric intake along with the added physical activity, the theory goes that this would put you into a caloric deficit and hence you would lose weight. But what happens when you've been doing all of that but you haven't been losing weight? So let's first talk about caloric deficit before we get started about the reasons behind their lack of weight loss. It's important for you to know about that as well as energy expenditure. Every day, your body burns a certain amount of calories for the energy to perform regular functions such as your lungs for breathing, your heart pumping, your body temperature regulation, etc. This is your resting energy expenditure, or REE. The rate of the REE is affected by the resting metabolic rate, or the RMR. To effectively calculate your REE, you first must understand that this is a calculation that gives a very rough estimate. It's not exact. The REE differs from person to person based on factors such as height, weight, age, gender. The idea behind caloric deficit is that when you're consuming fewer calories than you typically burn or your REE, the remaining calories that your body has to burn for the daily functions would be coming from fat since body fat is simply stored energy. When you want to figure out how many calories to consume to be in a caloric deficit, you want to calculate your REE with activity level, then subtract how much of a deficit you want to go into. How much should you reduce to get into the caloric deficit? It's easy for people to get carried away and try to go overboard when calculating their caloric deficit. A pound of fat is approximately 3,500 calories. So, in theory, had you gone into a 500 calorie caloric deficit throughout the week, multiply that 500 times 7, that equals 3,500 calories. Therefore, one pound of fat would be lost after that week. Health experts recommend weight loss at a rate of 1 to 2 pounds a week. This can be problematic for the misguided person because they may want to increase a caloric deficit instead of 500 calories to 1,000 calories. Think of it this way. Imagine if you're already eating 2,000 calories a day. Getting half of that at just 1,000 calories a day could be a big jump for some people and could lead to problems in the long term. As for why you're not losing weight, changing your diet to go into a caloric deficit, working out regularly, drinking a gallon of water each day, increasing your protein intake, adding cinnamon to your foods, consuming apple cider vinegar. All of these are research proven methods that have successfully led test subjects to lose significant weight. But it doesn't guarantee that it's going to work for you. In most of these studies, researchers simply lump their data together and if you were to look at individual results, you're going to find that some of the subjects didn't lose weight, while others had their weight literally melt off. That's totally unfair, but that's a fact of life. My advice? Stop putting weight loss on such a high pedestal. I want you to put into focus more on maximizing your quality of life. A number of my clients had gone years without working out and they tell me that they feel so much better, so much more energetic, less fatigued, a lot stronger, etc. Whether or not their weight had gone down or even if it did go up a bit, that doesn't matter to them anymore because they're living a much higher quality of life now that they're working out. And if you've truly been consistent with your exercise and nutrition, have you noticed a change in how your clothes fit? I had a client whose weight was pretty much stagnant the entire time that she trained with me. But over the course that she was working with me, she had actually lost four sizes. Sometimes when the weight appears to have been unchanged, no matter what you're doing with your exercise or with your diet, you're probably losing fat and at the same time gaining muscle. So your weight is staying roughly the same, but now you're a lot leaner than you were in the beginning. 
And in my book, that's a win. It's totally natural for you to feel frustrated and want to give up if you've been working so hard but that scale hasn't been moving. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you're a quitter. If weight loss does happen, that's awesome. And you should be proud of it. If not, just remind yourself of all the great things you've got going on in your life and the new things that you've learned during your fitness journey. If you truly enjoy your fitness and dietary routine and you're feeling a lot better since you adopted them, stick with it. And if you weren't really liking it, say your diet didn't feel too good or your exercises, you weren't really getting too into it, find something else that appeals more to you and that you truly believe that you can stick with it for the long term. Remember, you want to look five or ten years ahead of time and not just your Cancun trip next month. So that does it for today's workout nerd out. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, have a good one.